Good morning, Dr. Amadi. Good to have you on this Sunday morning on the On The Morning Show. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve uh, Oje and uh, my other sister. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Thank you. Thank you indeed. All right, let's I talk. Just, and I just, I, I just, I just, I just, yes, I just, is also here uh, <laughs> looking radiant. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm sure that you've been following the uh, brickbat between uh, the federal government and the state government. Uh, and of course, it all stemmed uh, from uh, the speech, uh, the, the, the statewide, uh, 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 nationwide address by President Bola Tinubu uh, in the course of the protest, the 10 day protest, uh, whereby said that part of what his administration has done uh, is to disburse a total of about 573 billion naira to state governments and that uh, you know uh, people should also find a way uh, to make their states accountable in all this noise uh, regarding uh, hunger regarding hardship uh, etc but of course as you know uh, governor shema kide of your state was the first to come out to say that nothing of the sort happened uh Lassarawa has joined osho state has joined abia state you know, all claiming that uh, federal government didn't uh, dish out any grant to them, that what they got uh, was part of the NG CARES uh, uh, intervention, which was a World Bank assisted, uh, assisted uh, loan that states will be required to repay as part of the uh, monetary, you know, uh, to take care of, uh, uh, of their needs, certain part of their need uh, because of COVID-19. Where is the truth, Dr. Amadi? Was the president misled in his uh, address, or are we just simply playing politics again? Well, thank you very much for having me. Again, I think there are three issues I would like to uh, focus on here. First is that uh, we don't expect uh, a high presidential speech of such uh, critical importance uh, addressing the nation um, as a way of uh, ending uh, national protests that uh, we will have basic facts of presidential action being disputed. So it, it will now have what looks like a presidential lie. And that's not a good moment for you know, the president to lie, not just about recollection of facts. Uh, I was in Oyo, or I was in Oyo on the 12th of September. Well, it didn't go there. That's, that's, those are minor. Or maybe um, an expression of opinion or self-description for purpose of political uh, capital that didn't try to be true. Uh, that, is, that speaks to the, to the president's maybe uh, honesty. But this is about intervention, huge intervention, that the president claimed to have made as part of addressing the hunger and the challenges that you know, um, provoked this national protest. So to have it in the presidential speak, uh, speech speaks to a mindset of, one can say, fraud. I mean, the, whether the presidential speechwriters themselves, who embedded that fact and, you know, shaped it to be like, look, Mr. President has actually been responding to these concerns by advancing this amount of money for states to deal with the outcome of these policies we're making. So in a sense, the president kind of uh, uh, rebuts the presumption against him that say, look, this is evidence. I, I've been doing what you tell me to do. And again, push back to the states. The states have failed to, to deliver these uh, palliatives, if they have done so, maybe the, the, the hunger question would have been less and there probably would no, no. So it's, it's like being a court and are using false evidence to prove your innocence. So in the public court, the president brought what's now turned out to be false claim to make a case. Uh, so it damages the case made, but it speaks more to the, the temper and the, the morality of the people behind the, the presidency in terms of how desperate and what degree of falsehood they can marshal to exonerate themselves. Again, it's like the president is also kind of, you know, you know, putting the state governors at risk. So, I mean, if state governors really received this amount of money for intervention to deal with hunger, which is not uh, project-based money, then the question is, why didn't they, you know, distribute it? Why, why didn't we see the impact? So, in other words, the principal minders, push the, kick the can, say, guys, you are, you are facing the wrong guy. This guy has done everything he could do. Look at the state governors. They're the ones who cause this problem. They're the ones whose failure of governance results in what we are facing today. And so if that was true, 
then the bring has made a case why we should now, you know, pivot to the state governors as the villains in this case. Right, so the governors are right to, right. you know, right. mildly fight back. Right. So, so for me, it was an error. It was a tactical, you know, defense. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Doctor Samamade, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt you here because you know you've used uh, two very strong words to describe what the president had said. You know, you said it. You know appears to be a presidential lie and even fraud. Mm -hmm. But the federal government, through the Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning, had mm -hmm. put out an ad on July 22nd, to be specific, on this day newspaper, announcing the reimbursement of 438 billion naira of this World Bank intervention loan to 34 states and the FCT. That's with the exception of Anambra and Kaduna. I have that um, ad right in front of me. On, and they say it's under a COVID-19 recovery mm -hmm. plan, NG Cares. Um, you know, it's a program for results whereby states had to use their money to advance um, to, and to implement the program. Uh, they say the loan was given to states after the World Bank had verified the amount spent by each state and that the purpose of that loan was to help each state expand access to livelihood support of their citizen, that is also to assist in food security services, and grants, pay attention, grants to poor and vulnerable households. The president, um, you know, in, had, in his speech mm -hmm. had said that more than 570, this is what he said, and I quote, more than 570 billion has been released to 36 states to expand livelihood support to their citizens. That's all he said in that statement. That's what he said. And, you know, he, now he says it's 36 states. In that ad, I saw 34 states, and it was, you know, a little lower than 570. It was 438. So we're assuming that maybe the other two states left out has been included. That's yet to be fact-checked. And you're hearing all your state governor, Jay Makinde, saying that, yeah. you know, he's... Mm -hmm. Announcement was a misrepresentation of facts because the states are only being reimbursed funds that they have already invested. Now, how is it misrepresentation when the federal government itself actually had announced sure. the same intervention, explaining exactly what Shei Makinde had said? How is this misrepresentation? So let me answer very quickly. I mean, I, I think it's good to brought the facts. It actually refers to my position. Now, look at it. A reimbursement presupposes a spend. So the state are being reimbursed. Many of those states, of course, the way government works, sometimes you know, loans and debts and all that. Okay, fine. Now, that's an advert for a program, or a, a publication for a program which the World Bank you know, paid states. So states have an entitlement. It's the the federal government, program. look at how it works. The federal the presidency program. as the so. It's the yeah. same exact program. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's state program. Yeah. No, no, the point I'm making is that that's not the presidential speech. The content of the presidential speech is a reflection of what government has done to deal with the outcome of the policies they are challenging. So that's why I use the word very carefully. I said, if that speech, you know, there are many programs government, state governors have gotten loans for different things. And by the way, nobody should take the state government from responsibility because exactly. governance is subnational in the main. The point I'm making is that in a presidential speech where you pass off, passing off, the pass off here was that in response to all these things, this is what we've done. We've done, not what the World Bank has done or what they said entitled to. The federal government do give refunds, and you know, because they are like I, the point I'm making that the federal government is the gateway to the states. Under constitutional law, the so organized the president. So even if the states have legitimate entitlement from international organizations or foreign bodies, they pass to the federal government. Now, back to today's issue. The question then is: it seems to me, and this could be debatable that it was passed off as one of the things that the federal government has done in its program of, the federal government has announced after the removal of fuel subsidy, series of programs, interventions, to deal with the crisis of hunger and the crisis of uh, loss of livelihood that accompanied those policies. So it was pushed as if this is something the, federal, the states have received from the federal government as federal government program. Now, there are two, two different things. The federal government, develops programs which they mandate states to implement. And I think we'll get to that. Those programs are guided by policy and law, 
and they create entitlement for citizens, and you presage them with announcement. So citizens know that this is federal program, being administered by state or local government, or even by private or non-profits. Those are federal programs. A World Bank reimbursement to states is an entitlement of the states presupposing that the states have made investment or borrowed to deliver projects which the World Bank considers important and reimbursing them. So the point I'm making is that when I use the word potential lie, it doesn't necessarily mean that they cooked up figures. It, it means that you've passed off this as part of what you have done. And again, the bigger question here is, why should we you know, tie, yes, the, the World Bank loan or World Bank support is part of a socioeconomic intervention in a global sense. But the real question here, and I think that's what the principle should be addressing. So first, it's not a lie that the state governor says, he didn't give us money for anything. You gave us back our refund from the World Bank. So that's a settled. That what the federal government gave was a refund, not a federal project to intervene, even though the impact could be the same. So this is important for principal communication. Because for me, the context of the principal speech, which we have all criticized, is that it was supposed to be a response to the demands of the protesters, and it came across as this is just what we have done in response to what they are doing. But it not came out to be this is actually funds that we have advanced on behalf of the World Bank to states who are entitled to. So I think for me, yes, the word lie does not mean that. Like I said, it's not like a fact. It's like going to court and proving your innocence by contextualizing transactions that are not fit for that transaction. So you can take an event that happened in a different context and present it as if this is a, something that, and that's what the states are responded. I mean, if the federal government has said, well, we have advanced to the state the World Bank loan, which the World Bank guaranteed to them, we've done that, the states will not come back and say, no, you didn't give us money. Everybody saw this as money that should have been used within this period as part of federal government, federalized intervention to do with the, 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 the outcome of the policies, mm -hmm. and it is not. And right. that's the context in which I say yeah. they have now put the states at risk of, mm -hmm. of attack. Yeah, that's yes. the point. I mean, yeah, you are, you are, you are spot on, Dr. Saba Mandi, with that. You know, passing it off as if it is their, you know, uh, grant. Because the governor of Nasara State, like um, Steve had highlighted, last week said that, you know, the World Bank loan was for infrastructural projects and not for palliatives, and that the loan was an interest-free loan initiated back in 2020. Therefore, the loan predates the Tinubu administration. In fact, the first loan disbursement Absolutely. was done even right. before Tinubu became president in May 2023. But, you know, when you look at the reimbursement Absolutely. announcement, um, you know, this uh, back in July, the Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning gave that impression that you are saying. They, they said that the program was made possible because of the various policy reforms introduced by President Tinubu, which enabled states to invest heavily in the program. In fact, the ministry said, and let me quote here, that NG Cares is one of the social protection programs that are implementing the tenets of the Renewed Hope Agenda. I mean, this is, this is the question a lot of people are asking. Why, why would you make such a... A, a, a statement, this semantics to deceive Nigerians. That's the question. Absolutely. I, th I think the answer to that question is, look, you govern according to your social psychology. This government really ha is a strong government on politics and propaganda. Propaganda, quote unquote, it doesn't mean falsehood. But it means that there is a, you, know, you, you, you use communication to solve technical and managerial problem. You, if you're not driving your policy well, Oh, everything is under the mantra of renewed hope. So you see talking point around renewed hope, renewed hope. And so this deception is a product of that mental fixation around propagandizing. Look, you don't need to do that. This is not part of any renewed hope intervention. This is something that predates your government. And so gov go governance runs, some of the bureaucratic things are not politically visible. They are part of transactions for years. And so government run them as routine administrative work. But then you have to speak to what you are doing in terms of policy. So it seems to me that the inability to really, first, inability to create policies that are transformative and inability to explain these policies in the sense, in the, in the way that they show how government is transforming is the reason why there's so much fallback to propaganda, to 
misspeak. And then you see also that sometimes presidential communications are contradictory. Somebody will say, oh, uh, we've got visa waiver from Dubai. Somebody will say, oh, it's not actually visa waiver, it was this. I, I think they should you know, pause and say, look, let's get back to basics of governance. Let's look at the rule and say, oh, if you don't have the skill set, we bring the skill set, we develop policy. That, uh, they, they probably have good intention, the intuition of what, how to drive the economy. But then you need to get these policies well, and then communicate them well, and also tell the people that, look, people understand that there will be no massive transformation they want. But they want to see rationality in policy design. They want to see a commitment, a honesty and sincerity in driving them. And they want also to see some short wins that kind of post signal the long-term gain they're going to get. We're not getting the distance. So each time you try to, if you do a, a, a communication audit of the government, of governance structure since you know, the political came to power, you, you see a lot of these misrepresentations and mischaracterization because of these over, overwhelming each, each, each to get into the propaganda war, to, 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 to kind of uh, you know, blind spot people, to kind of stop every, any wave of criticism, to you know, frightened by criticism. That's not how to govern. Be calm. Explain what you're doing. Don't have this instinct to go and say what you're not doing and then confuse yourself and then lie. Because when the government begins to lie, it loses the credibility. I mean, why should we believe presidential communication if we see that they're actually lying needlessly? You don't need to do that. So, so I think that failure to, to, to understand or to create policies that you know, give confidence of government approach to governance and inability to explain what you're doing in a way that people see, oh, this is the roadmap. And we, even though we're not happy with the outcome, but we can see, you know, some, we can keep faith with that process. That inability is what is pushing them further down the path of propaganda, you know, um, you know, miscommunication, and then being much more combative in trying to then prove we're running the government well, and then you keep on making that mistake. So I, I think it's, it's a social psychology because it's about how you approach, define your governance. And maybe too much politics, too early, creates that, because these are the kind of things you see on soapbox you know, campaigns. Uh, people lie a lot, whether in the US, anywhere in the world, have truths, you know, have big truths, misrepresentations, just to create the optics and create the narrative that you want to sell to voters. But after election in governance, you, know, you, you, you should sit back and know that, look, the, the projects, outcomes, results will penalize you in the short to medium term. I, I don't know what happens with the election, that's a different issue, but for governance, they're not getting it right, and that's the problem I see.